From the Mitcham News and Mercury, the 16th of November 1973. The worst moment for the cricketers in Mitcham's Cricket Green was when they had to decide whether to blow up the pub or the vestry hall. It happened during the war when, with the compliments of the German Air Force, a landmine dropped between those two most important buildings in Mitcham. The mine didn't go off right away, and the locals had time to put up a blast shield, but, as any ex-air warden knows, there's no point in setting it up on both sides of the bomb. There has to be somewhere for the blast to go. There are still people in Mitcham who remember the arguments that raged over which building would be added to the list of bomb sites in the area, and there are some who reckon they made the wrong choice in saving the vestry hall. But finally the bomb went off, and that made way for the cricketers as it is today. It was rebuilt about 15 years ago, just as the regulars were getting used to the bottle store behind the pub. But whatever anyone says about the loss of the old pub, which had graced the cricket green since the late 1700s, the new cricketers is a worthy successor. It has been going long enough not to have that fiercely modern look of the new or done-up pub yet. It's not so old as to be plain uncomfortable. And with the atmosphere it inherits from its cricketing tradition, it emerges, rightfully as a well-known pub of character. The first thing you notice in the lounge bar are the dozens of photographs of cricketing greats. A long line of former county players stare down slightly disapprovingly as the customers line up at the bar and the whole of one wall is given over to a colour photograph of Mitcham playing Streatham on the cricket green. On the way to the gents, there is a collection of cartoons depicting the rules of cricket, but then it's only right that the pub should hang on to some of its history. After all, for years it was used as the pavilion. Atmosphere of a different kind is provided by the licensee, Charles Cromack. He's an enormous man, given largely to blue suits and yacht club ties, who seems to spend most of his time on the outside of the bar, where he calls for drinks on the house as if the stuff was still a penny a pint. With him is his wife, Joan, with her pewter goblet from the London Victuallers Golfing Association. Together they make the ideal couple to run a pub where businessmen come in to unwind. They come from the executive floors on the local industrial estates and from the many offices fronting the cricket green. Dozens of them make the daily trek to the pub where they set about a lager, a laugh and lunch. Overseas representative for Downs Brothers of Church Path, Mr Richard Dickinson said, We mostly come here for the beer. After all, it is real beer from the wood. But then there's the food as well. I think the cricketers serves real pub food and for that, it's one of the best in the area. Downs transport manager Mr Peter Goltry was there too. I like to eat in the bar as a rule, but people entertaining clients can go in the restaurant upstairs. Anyway, you generally find the lunches here are pretty good. And so they are, Charles Cromack admits. I suppose the food here is as important as the drink. Our restaurant does very well. The restaurant is really a small meeting room, cosily decorated with a red colour scheme and complete with bar and barmaid. It is perhaps too small, giving the impression of a country tea shop but there's a good meal to be had there with melon and eight-ounce steak, mushrooms, tomatoes, peas and potatoes, then a cheese board and coffee at pound fifty-eight. For those who prefer to eat in the bar, a good helping of real homemade steak, kidney and mushroom pie comes at 27p and chips and peas at 7p a portion. A ham sandwich costs 18p and arrives with a knife. Service is good and quick and very reasonable considering there always seem to be about five people milling around behind the bar. Barmaid Irene Hogg, the pub's 53 years old heartthrob, dishes out a warm welcome and refers to everyone under 90 as young man. A bonus heartthrob is 25 years old Penny Balsam, a very shapely clerk at the borough's health department in the vestry hall. All eyes swivel towards the door when she walks in with an absurdly unintentional sex appeal. The lunching businessmen were most flattering in their comments, but none of them wanted to be quoted. Wouldn't want the wife to see it, old man. Auburn-haired Penny just opened her eyes very, very wide and said, I never knew I was any sort of a mascot or anything. I just come here because it's handy at lunchtime and I like the people. There was an immediate murmur of approval at these words. Finding out why the regulars in the public bar liked the cricketers was more difficult. Almost to a man they said it was the lousiest pub in Mitcham, and Jim Goodsell added that the governor wasn't too sociable in the public. Why not go somewhere else then? Because he comes here he said, and pointed to his brother Fred. Fred Goodsell thought for a moment, hesitated over saying he was only there because Jim was there, and finished up with, you can always find a good argument in here. 
Immediately he had one. New faces popped up to say it was the only place you could get decent beer, while others came to play crib or darts. Certainly none of them could have been attracted by the bar itself. It seems to have missed out on all the effort that produced all those cricketers in the lounge. Instead, there is dark green wallpaper, peeling at the edges, and an obscene sort of trough at the foot of the bar which catches cigarette ends. But there's a lot to make up for it. Just outside the public bar is a rose garden, and although there's plenty of traffic noise, it's a real sun trap in the summer. Strangely enough, not many people seem to know about this. Most of them sit out in front of the pub where they can rest their feet on the bumpers of cars in the car park and catch glimpses of the cricket green through the traffic. The Cricketers isn't a big pub, so there's no room for bar billiards or any of the more traditional pub games, but there's a flourishing darts club and a football team. Every year there's a coach outing to the races at Goodwood. The public bar has a TV and in both bars are one-armed bandits which pay out a ceiling of 10p in cash and the rest in tokens. There is no jukebox, which gives the lads in the public bar something to moan about, but there is piped music on tape. Mild, disappearing from most pubs these days, is still on draft at the Cricketers. Bitter comes from the wood as well. There's draft Guinness, draft lager and Worthington White Shield as well.